This is Twit. How is Android Auto different from Google Automotive, Tim? What is? Uh, explain what that Google Automotive so, is. So right now, if your car has Android Auto, basically your phone is effectively working as a terminal. It's providing an interface, is effectively doing a video out signal and taking over a part of the dashboard of the car. Uh, if you do run Android within the dashboard, as we saw some demonstrations from Volvo and from Audi, uh, that actually is Android running natively in the car. And in that case, if there is a native infotainment system there from, uh, for example, Volvo Census system or the Audi MMI system, that actually be running on top of Android. So it's kind of like turning things upside down, whereas you now have Android Auto running on top of the infotainment system. You would then have the infotainment system running on top of Android. But oh, wow. the, the net result is the same basic interface, the same basic app but you no longer would have to have your phone connected to the car. You'd have Spotify running right there in your car now, and you'd have your playlist right there. You'd have the active data connection in your car serving up that data. These are uh, Ron, Amato, uh, Romadio, Ron Amadio at Ars Technica was on uh, Twig on Wednesday, and these are the pictures he took at the, uh, mm. at the event. So this is to compete with uh, QNX and other uh, uh, car operating systems? Microsoft right, QNX Auto. is a big player in, in basically providing the low-level operating systems that that then these infotainment systems like Sync 3 are built on top of. Uh, li, li, there's Linux in the car as well, which is making a big play to our be, Teslas be use, right uh, Our now. Teslas are running on Linux. Right. Yeah. And the, look, there's a big push to make that a lot more sophisticated than it has been in the past. But this is a huge moneymaker for QNX right now. And, uh, and ultimately, Android wants to be in there as well to have more power. Uh, down low, uh, basically. So that really would mean the foundation of those operating systems would be Android-based, which is, again, a, a Linux-based operating system. But, uh, but that would give it's Google also power. data for Google, right? Absolutely. And they're getting, you know, you, you got to figure Google's getting a lot of that information anyway if you're taking your phone with you. Uh, but ultimately, having that in your car means that they know your destination. In theory, they could know your rate of speed. You know, it, it remains to be seen exactly what Google would be able to take out of the car. But ultimately... If they're tied within within the CAN bus of the car, they could, in theory, get access to anything that they wanted to, even whether your turn signal's on or whether traction control activated, which might you know mean that they could use that data to then serve ways. If you slip on a patch of ice in your car, maybe there's an automatic ways notification that's posted that would then alert drivers behind you. You know, the, again, there's a, a a case for positives out of this, but uh, if you are concerned about privacy, there's some negative implications too. And of course, yeah, some of what sell data to the government, perhaps, and you know, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be cynical, I'm trying to be positive. They maybe could use that information to improve infrastructure and roads that, in Absolutely. a way that they couldn't before, the way well, that traffic Well, self-driving vehicles, right? If uh, mm -hmm. it, One of the problems self-driving vehicles face is humans driving other cars in the same environment. That's a mess. But maybe if you're driving a car with Android auto or google automotive underneath at least it can communicate with the self-driving car and say look my human's about to do something really stupid so you might want to just hold <laughs> back a little bit that kind of thing yeah Indeed. i think a lot of this is way down the road you know right now these this google system isn't really powerful enough to power all the systems within the car uh, but definitely building it inside of the dashboard means that it does have ah. easier access to a lot of that data uh, and that means that it then, you know, down the road could certainly have a lot more power and a lot more communications. And, and Google has basically always said, you know, we don't need th this standardized vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle communication system that, that that the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration has been pushing for decades now. We don't need any of that stuff. Just give our cars an active data connection and we'll kind of take care of the rest. And, and this this is another step in that direction.